The first three filters that we're going to look at in Handbrake deal with deinterlacing. There is the deTelesign filter, the decomb filter, and the deinterlace filter. But before we can actually look at setting those, we need to go to the video tab and look at the frame rate. As we already discussed, the frame rate used is going to depend on how we're handling any interlaced material and what sort of interlaced material is there. Generally speaking, there are a couple of settings you're going to want to look at. Number one, same as source. If your video runs at 25 frames per second, same as source is almost always a safe bet. Likewise, if it runs at 30 frames per second and is all true interlaced video, same as source is a good option. It will also work if you have a combination of film and true interlaced video running at 30 frames per second and you want to do VFR encoding. Where things get complicated is when you have a mixture of true interlaced video at 30 frames per second and film content. If the film content is hard telesigned, you can use same as source to keep it at the video frame rate. If on the other hand your source is soft telesigned or uses pull down flags, 23.976 frames per second is the proper frame rate to use if you want the film frame rate. If, on the other hand, you want it to use the frame rate of the video, you should set it to 29.97. Once your frame rate is set, you can move back to the Video Filters tab. The first option we'll look at is DTelesign. DTelesign is used only when you have film content that is encoded with a hard telesign. In that case, set it to default. If you have film content that is encoded with pull-down flags but progressive video, set it to off. Both decomb and deinterlace deal with deinterlacing actual interlaced video. We'll look at deinterlace first. There are three settings, fast, slow, and slower. Generally speaking, you should stay away from fast. It is the fastest setting. It also will produce by far the lowest quality. Slow and slower both use advanced techniques to decrease the number of artifacts that you're going to experience. The overall picture quality will be much better. An even better option to use, in most cases, is decomb. Decomb has just one setting, default, that you can use. However, it works basically the same as the slow and slower modes to deinterlace. The difference is it doesn't deinterlace every frame. Instead, it looks for combing artifacts present from interlaced video and only deinterlaces those frames. Set this to default to use it. In fact, you can generally leave it set to default since it will do nothing when you have progressive frames. Besides deinterlacing, the video filters in Handbrake can perform other operations for cleaning up your image. First of all, we'll look at the deblock filter. Blocking occurs when not enough bitrate is given to encode a given frame. Since the frame is divided up into smaller blocks before being encoded, when there isn't enough bitrate, you can sometimes see the edges of these blocks. The deblock filter will attempt to smooth out those edges so you don't see them. However, as a result, it will also tend to smooth out other details in the frame. Use the lowest setting possible to remove the edges of the blocks. When possible, use no setting whatsoever. You can see that it says off when it's all the way to the left. Instead of dealing with artifacts or errors in the picture, the denoise filter deals with information that gets added from a second source. For example, a broadcast capture may have noise that's added from interference. The denoise filter has three settings, weak, medium, and strong. Like the deblock filter, you should use the lowest possible setting or leave it off entirely if possible. Finally, we have the grayscale encoding option. When encoding black and white video, it's best to use this option for two reasons. Number one, it saves on the number of bits used to encode with. Since none of the color information needs to be included, only light and dark, there is more bitrate to go around. The second advantage to this 
is sometimes black and white footage actually has color information in it, typically from blemishes or scratches or other defects on a piece of film. By setting this on, you remove those because no color information will be included in your output video file. However, if you do not have black and white footage, unless you would like it to be black and white, make sure to leave it off. Once you have your filter options set, the last thing you should do is preview your video. Previous versions of Handbrake had a preview that was in the main window. However, this only showed still frames. All this, although this helps you find artifacts like combing, you don't really know what the video will look like until you see it in motion. And that's the purpose of the preview feature. In order to give an example of some interlacing artifacts, I've loaded an interlace source and turned off all the deinterlacing filters. The first thing to do then is to click the preview button. This will open up a video preview window where we have some options. Number one is the start at preview option. Here you select one of ten different previews. Each one of these previews represents a different point in time during your video clip. This allows you to go to different parts of the video to find different examples of artifacts. I'm going to select number five. Generally speaking, I recommend going from the middle rather than the beginning where you may have different sorts of sources. For example, interlaced video that's been added to film. Selecting number five, I next move on to the number of seconds. You can select between five and sixty seconds. The default is ten. I recommend usually going with nothing less than thirty. Finally, we have options to either play with QT, which is QuickTime, or the one we'll be using, Play with VLC. The first thing that's going to happen is we will get some video encoded, just our short little clip. Once it finishes encoding, it's going to start playing in our VLC media player window. We'll first look at it in motion. You'll want to pay close attention to the hands that you're going to see. That's a good place to see interlacing artifacts because there are a lot of edges. Now notice around the hands there's a lot of blurring. I'll go ahead and pause that and just fast forward it since we've seen it in motion. You can see that when they're, the fields are very far apart you can literally see two hands for each one. One is almost a ghost of the other and then you see all these lines and that's a sure sign of interlacing. Even when his fingers are fairly close together when there's not much movement you'll find these interlacing artifacts. Once again they look like jagged lines that's combing. So that's the sort of thing we're going to be looking to remove and of course we don't want it to look so blurry when it's moving. Let's go ahead and look at that again. Notice every time a hand moves around it gets blurry. The faster it moves obviously the blurrier it gets but that's where you're not probably going to notice a difference from deinterlacing. Now we'll go ahead and close the preview window and we're going to set the decomb filter to default. Open up the preview again select our preview. We're going to look at the same one. Once again it encodes and once again once it starts playing we're going to look for those same sorts of artifacts and see if they've been, it, been removed at least to some extent. Now chances are they won't be removed entirely. There's only so much you can do with deinterlacing because we are in many cases looking at pictures that are very different from one field to another. However we should see some noticeable improvement. Now, as we play it, you'll see that there's much less blurring around the hands. Let's go ahead and fast forward back to here, though. Now you see there's a little bit of blurry edges here, but the combing is gone. Move it a little bit further. 
when the movement is great between the two fields, you still see blurring, but all those jagged lines have pretty much been removed. Now if the movement is too great, then a blur is all you're going to see. However, when the movement is very fast, a blur is probably all you're going to see on the screen anyway. So now that I'm happy with my settings, I can go ahead and leave that there. You can obviously adjust these as many times as you need to. And once you're satisfied with your settings, you're ready to move on to looking at some video encoding settings.